Now, there's been a lot of talk lately about the newly released Sony A1, which when you look at the specs is an absolute beast. But what about practical hands-on use in the field? Is it all hype? Now, I'll be honest with you, I kind of dismiss the Sony A1 as just not being for me. I shoot with the Sony A7R4 and I am super happy with it. The A1, I kind of thought as being overkill. A few weeks ago, though, I did get the chance to have a go with it and half expected to be underwhelmed, but it's good. It's really good. I was out for the day across North Devon with Mark Baber from Sony filming all kinds of different content in different environments and using a number of different cameras and lenses. I'd organized a very quick photo shoot and we're talking five minutes from start to finish of a male surfer called Jack who owns and runs the Walking on Wave Surf School at Saunton Sands. As it turned out, for what I do as a portrait photographer, this was a perfect test for the A1 as it ended up being a very bright sunny day, so really quite challenging conditions. All right, so this is pretty much where we were on Saunton Sands Beach, a beautiful, beautiful beach. Uh, but it was a little bit later in the day, it was around about kind of midday. So the sun was coming up just behind the camera now over the sand dunes, that was coming up nice and high. The tide was just a little bit further in and when, maybe we were just over a little bit more over to the right hand side over here. But you know, this is pretty much the location. Um, but time was of the essence doing this photo shoot. I mean, you know, when I got hold of the Sony A1 for the first time, it was literally moments before we did this particular photo shoot. But if, if you've had your hands on a, an alpha camera before, dialing in those settings was pretty much second nature. But when it came to the photo shoot, obviously there was a, thing, a lot of things to consider. Quite a challenging photo shoot, really, if you look at it, because, you know, we had a cloudless sky, the sun was way up, middle of the day, it was harsh, bright light, really, really challenging. And also with that, we've got the sea, we've got reflections, we've got the bright waves, and we're also gonna have Jack in front of us, our surfer, with a dark colored wetsuit. So there's a heck of a lot there for the uh, camera to contend with. But when it comes to the, the way that the camera, I use the camera and the flash, because I had to use flash on this, because ordinarily, if I was gonna use the camera, no matter how good it is, I want Jack to be nicely exposed so we can see all the detail. But to do that, it's gonna mean that the sky and all that incredible scene behind us is gonna be blown out. So the way I do it is this, I use the camera first of all to set the scene and then bring a light in to light the subject. So with the flash turned off, the flash isn't even being used at the moment, what I'll do is I'll get the camera and on the A1 I dialed in the aperture I wanted. And I wanted this to be a really shallow depth of field, something like f1.4, so really wide open. Take that ISO way down, ISO 50, and then just kind of pointing the camera in the direction of where we're gonna be doing the pictures. It was then a case of just using that shutter speed, dialing it up faster and faster and faster until we got the, the look that we wanted, the detail in the sky, the detail in the, in the waves, in the sea and all that. And it just so happens that to get that, an aperture of f1.4 and an ISO 50, I had to wind the camera up to one eight thousandth of a second, which is just phenomenal when you think that we're also going to be using that with flash. Incredible. So once the cameras then got set up, it was then a case of just having a, a couple of test shots. So we've got Doug, first of all, to hold the flash, accidentally pressed the trigger and almost blinded him. But then once we'd got that flash dialed in on high speed sync so that the camera and the flash could talk just perfectly together, so that all the light coming out of that 400 watt second uh, Westcott flash landed on the sensor, it was then a case of just bringing Mark over, you know, Mark from Sony, get him over and just do a couple of test shots on him because what I didn't want to do was use Jack. So practice on Mark, take a couple of quick test shots with Mark 
then bring Jack in. And it really was just a simple case of getting into position. The settings were in the, on the money. They were, they were bang on. It was just a case of taking maybe five or six photos just to get that pose correct, how we wanted it. But it was as simple as that, bringing him in. Now, when we've got the picture taken, you know, I just, I have to contain myself because I can see it really clearly on the back of the camera. I can see that it's absolutely nailed it. The camera's nailed it. It was, it was effortless. So we've got the scene behind us, we've got a beautiful blue sky, we've got waves crashing behind us, but the bright white waves are, real, are still maintaining detail. But then we've got Jack, who's wearing this dark wetsuit with detail. And having that together in the one picture, the dynamic range within this camera is just phenomenal. You can kind of see, you know, you can see everything on the camera using that, you know, the rear screen. I don't tend to use you know, the sort of uh, looking through the camera, I don't tend to do that so much. I do tend to use the screen a lot. So I was just literally holding it low down to get the right kind of angle up. So having that tilt screen to be able to see what I'm doing, huge help. But it was still having light on it. So it wasn't that easy to see exactly everything on the back of the screen, but I could see the outline of Jack. But I knew that the, the camera itself was just locked onto him. That focusing, that face tracking, and then that eye focus absolutely nailed it. So yeah, what was, what was potentially an incredibly challenging photo shoot was made a piece of cake. It literally was made a piece of cake. Now we went on to do a lot more filming. Mark was using the A1 to film Jack surfing in 8K, but not for the video footage, but to grab stills from it, all done within the camera. I was just so looking forward to getting the files from the portrait shoot into my computer so I could take a look at them on the big screen. And actually that's what you can see here in my Lightroom catalog. On the left is the out of camera image and the right is the final retouched image. And you can clearly see here that I didn't have to do much. The color out of camera is absolutely bang on. Zooming in, you can see the detail too sharp as you like and actually the lens i was using on the a1 was the 85 mm g master which is the one that i've got on the front of my sony a7r4 here it is my favorite of all the lenses but there's even detail in jack's wetsuit you can clearly see it and the eyes are pin sharp and this is a full length shot taken from some distance back Now, like I said, I only had the A1 in my hands for literally five minutes, but yeah, very impressed. Sure, the autofocus and the tracking is outstanding and so fast at locking on. The dynamic range, shooting in high speed sync, everything just worked. Even down to when you have the camera in your hands, there are additions made to the body, meaning you can make adjustments that ordinarily you would have had to have gone into the menu to change. So all this goes to make what is clearly a great camera, super easy and convenient to use. So yeah, very impressed. Now one thing that excites the hell out of me is how these cameras just get better and better. The camera is almost becoming your assistant, giving us confidence, knowing it will do what we need it to do when we need to do it and doing it really well. This is doing so much good for our creativity. There's literally no holding back. So do I think the A1 is all hype? Absolutely not. Do I think it's overkill? Well, if you'd have asked me that question maybe 15 months ago, I might have answered it differently. But if there's one thing this COVID pandemic has kind of shown me, it's that we as photographers, we need to be adaptable. We need to stretch ourselves and we need to be willing to try new things. And it's a camera like the A1 that no matter what we throw at it, it's going to be able to handle it and handle it really, really well. Now, one last thing. I remember being told years ago that if you wanna know how good a camera really is, 
than do a print because a print reveals the truth. Holy shit.